Now the approach that we have been using, for the most part, it is not working and it is making no sense. Because really what happens is anytime there is a crime, the whole blame tend to be focused on um, politicians and on the police. And to me that makes no sense. Because the responsibility for crime to me starts at the level of the home, the house, the place where the child is born and, 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 and grown. And so, so many times when you hear um, things are happening concerning crime, people who are supposed to be more knowledgeable, people that are supposed to be more informed, they just join in on that same political vibe of just blaming politicians and um, police for crimes. And really, if, if we continue, there will be no solution to the crime situation that we have in the country because we're really pointing our fingers at them, the, the, the wrong people for the most part. And so I'm going to give my points. Now, the first point I'm going to bring concerning that matter, what really is causing the crime? Believe it or not, it has a lot to do with um, poor church attendance by young people. When we were growing up, and listen to me carefully, listen to the whole vibe, listen to the whole flow. When we were growing up, it was customary for people to go, children, young people to go to church every weekend. If you were an Adventist or something like Church of God, you would go to church on the Saturday. Everybody else would go to church on the Sunday. But most people would find themselves in a place of worship. Now, I noticed that when we got the economic boom from the banana industry, when things were working well, people start getting in the um, televisions, um, telev tel the televisions. People start getting the um, DVD players and things like that. Life was becoming more uh, enjoyable to some people, and so the people that were known to be going to church on the Saturday and the Sunday, some of them stopped going. Now, these people had children. They did not only stop going to church, but they never really made it compulsory or mandatory or even encouraged their children to attend church services. So the children were, for the most part, in the um, communities, some not going to church. Now, I'm not just saying here that church is the cure for all of them problems when you look at it because sometimes you'll find situations where even some of the people who may be causing some of the most problems in the society were people who were brought up in the church in some cases but nonetheless these are a very small minority of the people causing the problems so people stop going to church and they stop sending their children to church now what happening is what do you learn in the church for the most part, that is a place where they impart um, words of wisdom. Um, they impart um, the words of God that will guide you when you so that when you find yourself in a situation, you will make the right decision. You will hear things like "Do not kill," "Do not steal," "Do not do this," "Do not do that." So what happens is, in many people, these words will be somehow cemented in your mind. And in, in your heart. So when you find yourself in a situation where um, you may be tempted to do something bad, you will remember or you will be prompted by these words that uh, you must not kill, you must not steal, you must not do this, you must not do that. Because you will know that these are things that God require. And so as somebody who would have a fear of God by virtue of you going to the house of God, you would not do certain things that you would have normally done had you not been hearing these words. And so this is the main problem. It's almost like people are numb 
two words of righteousness and, 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 and wisdom. So these things are not in the minds of the people. It is not in the heart of a lot of them young people. So there is no moral guide or no moral compass. So people just do anything and anything and anything. So that is one of the things. But what we have in the society, those same people who will tell their children, who will um, not allow their children to go to church or not encourage them, when things get start getting too hot for them to handle, when all of the other systems fail, you hear them calling um, radio stations and saying, where is the church? Where is the church? The church was always there, but you have never wanted it. So that's one point. The other thing is, um, the other reason why I believe all these crimes are being committed um, on the part of young people is because the parents, many of the parents, um, never provided or created a foundation for um, some of these children. Sometimes people believe that these children are just wicked and are doing wicked things. But some of these things, some of these bad behaviors started as a result of people just being neglected and being hung hungry too. So um, you will have situation where people will just have their children and they believe that they, they will not provide a foundation and things will just work out by, um, by some accident. Things will just work out and everything will be fine and everything will be all right. But what you have is these same fellas who will not put, um, they will not build a foundation for their children. But you'll find a lot of them fellas have um, multiple women, multiple women that they are maintaining at the same time. And the thing is, the children are aware of those things. You have guys if, who have to maintain um, all of these women, and sometimes the children are neglected in basic things. There are some children who will not attend certain um, school functions because they do not have appropriate clothes. The only clothes they have for the most part is the, are the clothes that they go to school with. And if there is any other function in the school, they will not come because they do not have clothes. And so what we have is instead of providing these children with proper attire, some people will just use the money for other things that do not help. There are sometimes you have people going to parties, they have money to go to all kind of parties and sessions, but they, they, they neglect the children. They believe that it is the um, responsibility of the government and the society to provide a foundation for their children. In some cases, the government has a responsibility to do some of those things. But I believe principally the role of the parents is to provide the, 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 the foundation for the children. That is the main, you, that is your main role. You have to provide a foundation for the people. So what happened is you have a lot of these children growing up sometimes um, with a very low self-value of themselves. They do not feel good about themselves. They, think, they feel like they are less than. So... These people are growing up and they are not able to feel comfortable even among their own peers. And the, the worst part is when the boy is starting to get interest, interested in girls and the girls are to be interested in boys. And they do not have proper clothes and even proper shoes and proper food sometimes. And that really makes some people feel bad. And you and there are some people that you will just lose at that time. Because these things affect people in different ways. There are some um, young people, it will just motivate them to strive harder in life because they did not have those things. But there are some people, they will just see it as if their parents do not care about them and the world do not care about them. And they will sometimes develop a callous mentality. They really will not care about nobody because they feel like... Um, Nobody care about them. And that's why sometimes you see some of them moving like they out to fight the whole world. It's like they hit the whole world. Because it looks like even their very people don't really care about them. So you'll find fellas, sometimes um, when I was teaching, you'll have children 
that sometimes don't have food or do not dress properly and so some of them come late because of other things that they have to do to help themselves and when you find out you want to find out who the parents are so that you can call them to talk to them and it will be shocking sometimes to find out that sometimes this the, the parents of some of those children are people with good jobs sometimes the father has a good job and sometimes the father has a good trade but yet they do not really take care of these children and so sometimes these things cause um, some children to be enraged and so sometimes you look at them and sometimes it's like for no reason they're enraged you're teaching them and you're trying to talk to them and and they will just be enraged for no reason and it has to do with the foundation that they set some people have no foundation set for them and so these things are some of the things that that have children believing that nothing nothing is working for them nobody care of them for them and they just do not see any positive outlook for life the outlook is very um glim at best and so they will if they, if they don't care about themselves they'll not care about nobody else and that's where we get these things developing so they did not build a foundation for them and so what happened is you get in people who would lead them in the wrong way to be interested in them sometimes they will buy shoes for them sometimes they'll give them money to buy food but there's a price to pay because these are people that they are now recruiting your children into all kinds of things that you would never imagine just because you do not provide a foundation for them one of the other reasons, the third reason I believe that um, we have this crime situation and waves among young people is because, and remember all of those things adding up to cause some of the problems that we have. You have some people in the society who have very good jobs. They, they work with government or they have businesses. They, some of them are self-employed. They are tradesmen or tradesmen. tradesmen and make good money and they live in the very community that some of these young people live in some of them will take care of their children very well the children have everything that they need and they have no um no desire to help no one else nobody's child so once their children are taken care of they really don't care about nobody no other person's child and that's one of the problems that we have and some, some of, so sometimes you have school, um, children. School is uh, school is about to open, and they have no, they have nothing, not one book, nothing. And there are these guys who have very good jobs, and they could easily buy two free books or whatever, or even all of the books for the children. But the the whole thing is that they don't care about nobody else but their children. And some, and the thing is, they are in the community. You can just look at a child, and based on the way the person is dressed, you can know that that child is not being taken care of. And there are simple things that you can do to help these people. Or sometimes you know the, the parents, but they will not help. Now, so their mindset is that they will, um, they, they will prepare their, ch their children, um, give them a good education, and to hell with everybody else's child. But you need to realize too that the children that you neglect, they sometimes can cause so much problems that your children don't even enjoy the life that you think that they're going to have. And also it is possible too that whereas you, you give your children the best that you could give, some of them may leave and never really look back out for you. Some of them may go overseas and live there all their lives and send some US dollars for you which cannot really help you in every way. And sometimes the children that you neglect, you never help. They are the ones that are going to help you when you get old. But it is very sad to see that there are people with thousands of dollars, man. Extra, every month. And you have these children um, hungry, in bad situations, without clothes. And you, it does not touch your heart as a, as a human being to just give something small whatever you give will be a very small percentage of what you actually have just to make somebody else's life better 
Now, a lot of you people, a lot of the people who have these good jobs and they refuse to help other people, you are what they, you know, what they call um, house house Negroes in the time of slavery. You are these house Negroes that they felt they were better off than the ones that were working in the plantations, and so um, they had no interest or in terms of um, what was hap happening to the field slaves. And in spite of how the field slaves were suffering, those who were in their house did not really care. That's what you are. You are you have a good job. Everything is going on fine with you, so you think. And but you do not care about those who are less fortunate. You don't really care about the children of other people. And so, what I really want people to get from that particular point is that if you have a good job, you're making money. At least there are schools. Go to the schools and talk to the principals about contributing towards the school feeding program. Or ask the principal to identify a student who is very you know, poor or whatever and give them some money towards helping that child buy lunch or buy you know, certain things, buy clothes or something like that. Because you cannot be in a community and think that everything is good with you and then neglect the whole community. Somehow, black people like behaving like that. You have to look out for other people, children too. Because what happened to is um, these things put a strain on other people. Now, some people may say he's talking all of that, but um, what has he done? I have helped. I have done my part. I have purchased books for children. Um, by lunch, while I was teaching, almost every day I had to buy lunch. Sometimes free for free children, two children sometimes four but at least every day I had to buy lunch for at least one child every day and there are other teachers who are doing it also and so it is kind of unfair for all of these um, pressures to be on the backs of the teachers there are some of you who have very good jobs you need to go to the schools and talk to the principals and the teachers and see how you can help some other person's child because that will help that little um gesture of kindness can help the build up the self-esteem of a child help a child feel better about themselves and help people succeed there are people who have done very well in society because other people helped them when they were very poor but we have a crop of people in the country who make very good money but they refuse to help anybody they will not help nobody's child go to the school feeding program and help somebody help somebody we have school feeding programs check the principles to see how you can help somebody so the other point i'm going to bring concerning why we have all these crimes is there is a, it is almost like there is a, we have some people who groom, raise, nurture children for criminality. Yeah. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, the Bible says to train a child in the way that he should go. And when he grow older, he ain't go depart from it. But there are some parents who train children in the way that they should not go. Let me give you examples. A, a lady was telling me about this guy. He's the child's grandfather. But he's telling the child, when she goes to school, if any of the children trouble her, take the pencil and prick their eyes. And you will hear them saying things like, um, the child will be using up, um, obscene language will be cursing people and the parents will be laughing especially the mothers some of them will laugh because they feel it is so much of a good thing to hear a, their small child cursing, cursing somebody they feel like the child is making progress when they hear the child cursing somebody sometimes even some guys they, um, the way they dress the, some of them children, you will see the little thugs that are moving around the place. And it's the parent that is dressing them like that. 
they have they are those that will do all the criminal acts you see some of some other guys will um do having illegal firearms and all the other things that they do some of them do it in front of their children have the guns have all of the things in the presence of young and impressionable um, children who can see and understand all of the things that they are doing or sometimes they believe that the children are, are small and they can't understand not realizing that it's when these children are small that that's when they understand things the most so this is one of the things that we have we have that culture going on where people are raising their children in the wrong way you have guys calling their children killer. Come here, killer. These are some of the things that they do. They raise the children into a mentality of criminality. There are people that will tell uh, de tell their children, "I'm dip you on with a dip 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 you on a bit of um 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 piche yo." These are things that they're going to do. There are people that raise their children to do wrong things. There are some mothers that are enablers. They know that the children are stealing people's things, but they will cover up for them. They know that the child stole somebody's um, thing at school. They know that, and they will cover up for them. There are some mothers that are, that are enablers of bad things. They know that. Some of the things that are, even some of the, young, the, 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 the older ones, 20 something years year old guys sometimes committing crimes the mothers are very are very well aware sometimes of what them fellas are doing you have a child that does not own no store and you have you he has all of these laptops in the house there are some of these fellas that i will have groceries a lot of groceries in the house he never he's not a wholesaler he's not a retailer and he has all of these groceries in his house you benefiting from crime, so you're enabling it. A lot of these murders are enablers of crime. And when something happens, everybody is so quick to go and blame politicians, go and blame the commissioner of police. Commissioner of police, uh, commissioner of police, la la kai lika do me. Eklani buki kai kase kai moon, kase shop moon, tout bagay ko ha. Commissioner la kai lika do me, se ba isa ka fet, ekten zoka blame commissioner of police. You can blame police le bay ko en fait. Ek le se bay sa, le se krem sa ka fait la. Um, se bay la se mouna ka vole a ka vina ka se parents la. A dan se parents la ka wey, you can manger from ne. You can benefit from ne, ki yo baka di an yen. Ek den zov le blame politician, ek zov le blame um, commission of police. Pou se bay sa, you baka blame se parents la. Plus se enablers la. So we have to look at that thing um, carefully. You cannot blame the wrong set of people, and we have been blaming the wrong set of people for all of these crimes that are happening in the place. Another thing that is um, causing a lot of people to slip through the cracks and get involved in crime after a while is when you ignore um, the warning signs of people that spend a lot of time with your child. So what happened is um, the child spend eight hours with the teachers. And sometimes the, you, um, the child will probably spend less than three hours in your presence in the night, sometimes less, depending on the nature of the work that the people do or whatever. But invariably, the child will spend more time in the presence of the teachers. So there are certain nuances there are certain things that the child will be doing or certain weaknesses that they have there are certain problems that they may ha have that you will not know you will not know of these problems and but the teachers will know because when the child meet people of their age group their their behavior may change they may be doing they may do things that you never thought they were going to do because of the influence of the group on them it is just like you have some wild animals if they encounter one one person or one prey 
they may never come and attack but if there is a pack of them they will easily attack sometimes that's how some children are when they meet people of their uh, their peers sometimes they do things that they would have never done had they been at the, at your house and also there are certain behaviors that they um they will display in the school in a different environment that you will not know of so sometimes when the par- when the teachers tell them some of the things that um this they observe in some of the children they will not believe or sometimes they would think that the teachers are against their children and that's some of the things that we have we, we experience um that that you will experience and so what happened is sometimes they disrespect the teachers and so the teachers take no interest in their children so and so that leads to a situation where Sometimes the children get worse because the the teachers will no longer um, discipline them or tell them anything. There was a situation where I was working at a secondary school one time. The first week of school, some some students came to me and told me that a form one was selling marijuana in the school. He wa- he just came the first week of school and he was selling marijuana. And I I I found him. And I got the marijuana, the whole um, clay bag of, ni- of marijuana in his pocket. Took him to the office and everything. When his mother came to the school, his mother told the principal and told us that um, we have no evidence that her son was involved in selling marijuana. He, ha- he had the marijuana in his pocket. Instead of coming to the school and try to see how you can talk to the teachers you know to solve that problem you come into the school with all your bad adv- ideas in your head and telling people that we have no we have no evidence that her son is um selling was selling was selling marijuana in the school so upon investigation i found out that her, her boyfriend or her husband was a police so that's probably the best information that he could have given her was to tell her to tell us that we have no evidence. A two evidence la la yes still got the that no pan evidence that book uh, that yeah so all the evidence was there yet she's saying that we have no evidence that her son was selling marijuana in the school. So you see the kind of problems that you have there. A boy that is hundred percent guilty. We saw I saw him with my eyes. I took the weed from him. Yet, yet his mother come in and say that we have no evidence that her son was selling marijuana in the school. When I when that we had a meeting concerning that, when I realized what was happening, when this woman said that, from that point itself, I had no mind to correct him for nothing that he would have done in the school. Because this is your son in a serious situation as that. And the best and the, the greatest idea you have is to come and tell people that we have no evidence that your son was selling marijuana in the school. So these are the enablers that cause people to, the, some of the children to, to get these things. When they're ignoring the, um, the, 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 the information that the teachers are giving concerning the behavior of their children. And another point is you have some of these, some of these women who would tell the community, members of the community, leave their children alone. Whatever their children do, leave them alone. It's almost like they do not want, no matter what you see, leave their children alone. So what happens is with these people, the community just leave their children alone and the people will see them doing bad things and they will never correct them. So they, they, they just continue in their bad ways. And so at the end of the day, what we have is monsters we're creating because the community is not involved. Leave your child alone, so take what you get. Another thing is um, some of these people that, is, that are growing up, they have a wrong concept of, what, of the value of money and the value of work. So sometimes somebody have a shop and they assume that um, So sometimes they, you, they go and attack and rob somebody to just to get $5. You see, some when you have a shop, for example, a grocery shop, when something costs ten dollar, um, one dollar, sometimes it's only ten cents that's yours, ten percent profit. So all the money that the person is collecting in that shop 
10% of it is profit and plus they have to pay workers from that. But a lot of the people do not understand. They say, Mr. Kafan Shailaha. And so even when they go to school, they still do not learn. They still don't understand how things work. Even when you teach, those, teach them those things at school. Because these are things that you have taught them in school, in maths, about profit and all of those things. And yet they come out from school not learning none of this. They don't understand none of these things. You toujours feel a moun ka fan chay la han. Se pou sa ada se bon sa ka tre moun ek den you ka realize you ou tu a moun pou 5 dollars. So a lot of the people have a wrong idea of money and the value of money, which I think the schools need to do a better job, the parents and everybody, to give these people a better idea of the value of money. Because if they knew the value of the mo of money sometimes, you'd not get some of these fellas staying in the community all day gambling and drinking um, white rum in some communities. Nice young people doing those things. So um, these are some of the, the things that we need to consider when we, when we, consi when we um, talk about reducing crime in the, in the community. So another thing that um, is causing problems with in the community is that, is that you have some um, young people, some children, and their parents prefer pleasure and session more than the the um the livelihood more than the viability and health of the children there are women who will get money every week to go out buy clothes to go to session and things like that and never have money to buy food for the children so you have some of these children moving around without clo without proper clothes hungry and yet the parents dress nicely to go to session and so people need to really, uh, people need to hold some of these um, women and men accountable for these children instead of blaming the whole society, blaming police, blaming um, politicians every time, whereas they themselves neglect the, the, the people and nobody says anything about, the, um, about those things. Another thing that we need to bear in mind is the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. There is an, uh, an old lady who was telling me one time, she has a shop, and she told me that there is a lady who was passing by on the road by her shop, and there was a guy with a bus who was driving very fast, and the lady said, Ma puchi lo pa chua moon. Lo and behold, shortly after she said that, they heard um, the, the, the noise from the impact of the same van, and the van killed somebody. But it was her grandson, the same lady who said, Ma puchi puchi lo chwamun, her grandson died. Her grandson was the one who died. And so life and death is in the power of the tongue. We have to realize what we say to, to people, uh, what you say to these young people. There are some people I have heard who have told their children, An vivo lo ye, an violo ka fe. Especially if they do not like the father or for some reason they're not with the father or something like that. They will really castigate and insult them children concerning their father. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can't tell a young people they must kill somebody, they must rape somebody, or or viola ye. You cannot tell the children that. And some of you, some of these people are guilty of doing that. And this is why we have some of, in some cases, we have these problems because some of these people are cursed by their own parents. You can't just say anything that comes from your mouth to, um, to the children like that. People need to be careful. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The final point I want to bring up is um, we need to be careful about um, the activities and the things that people do some of the children do now what happened is there are some people who take pleasure out of hurting animals and i noticed that some of the dogs in the community where i live they look like they had burns on them like somebody's um throwing hot water on the dogs i noticed that was happening and i was trying to investigate to find out who is do who was doing that and i found out it is um, I found out who, it were, who, were, who were doing those things and these were young people doing those things. 
and there is a relationship that i have read of between um people causing harm to animals and then causing harm to people if it is easy for you to cause harm to animal it becomes very easy to cause bodily harm to people too and so people have to be very careful and observe when you notice young people causing harm to animals you have to be very careful and try to do something about that because a lot of times when you see young people doing things like that to animals they end up doing bad things to people too so people these are some of the points that i have looked at and analyzed and i believe that these things contribute to some of the problems that we have in the society but there are these things that i mentioned is just a tip of the iceberg there are more so what i would ask for you to do is to just in the comment section whatever ideas you feel that is contributing towards these problems in the country among the young people just write them there and so um some other time when i review that thing i'm going to include that but it is not something that you know you can just blame on the government and blame the police and say it is the government is government that i'm government everything everything happened young people should they do do um, and do those things police zokablame government but sometimes the very thing you're looking for is the one thing you can't see or don't want to see. And shy say problem no look away as a kaila mimika sorti. See a kaila. It is in your house. And so people don't want to assume the role. They don't want to accept the responsibility. So they try to pass on the blame to other people. And in this case, politicians and police it's easier for them to pass the blame on but you never check yourself we all of us are responsible for crime prevention in the country you can just by helping one child by talking to one child that can make a big difference by the way you deal with these young people and so it is something that all of us have to do i have done my part I have put my money where my mouth is concerning young people and concerning other people too. It is something that all of us have to do. There are some people who are making good money, they have money, but the only people they want to help is their, is their own children. They will help nobody else. And yet these are the ones that want to complain more when things happen in society. People, the role of preventing crime, reducing crime is all of our responsibilities so let's take that in mind and let's act accordingly and let everybody play their part word